You're watching YLN TV. Welcome everybody, I'm Carl Alford with YLN TV. We have a special report here today because we've got an ongoing crisis across the uh, nation concerning the, the border issue and also the, concerning the illegal aliens that they're shipping all over the place. Yesterday, you saw me post something about uh, ones that they had allegedly shipped to Oak Forest in Illinois which is 20 miles south-southwest of Chicago. The story there was that they had um, put a whole bunch of military vehicles in the parking lot of this hospital. Eh, financially, the hospital wasn't in the best shape, so you know, there was plausible deniability with the um, story that they put out there. But that was a whole heck of a lot of military vehicles. And when they put those out there, they expected people to call and find out about it because it was so unusual. Well, let's see. How do I say this? Oh, yeah. The government lies a lot, you know, a lot. So when they lie a lot, they have to get good at it. And one of the ways they get good at it is by covering their tracks. And their tracks in this case were the people in the area. Because I, I wasn't going to waste my time talking to the, uh, the county officials or anybody else. I wanted to get it from the horse's mouth, which would be the people closely associated with the hospital, the businesses, boom, right next door. Those businesses, curiously, came back with the same thing. When I talked to the hospital, I talked to the security guard. The answer is, what, the answer to the question of whether or not these vehicles were there was, I'm uh, not at liberty to say. Okay. Now, what do you think the chances are, my friends, that two in a row, people, business owners, pretty much across the street, would utter the same words? Hmm. That they come up with that in their own vo vocabulary is just, it, I find it amazing. I truly do. So, obviously, I knew that that was not going to fly. I uh, called a couple of more people in the area, and what I got was uh, one or two, at, now at this point I can't remember if it was two, that said, yeah, uh, they, had told, they had told us not to say anything about it. Called back the hospital, asked the uh, receptionist, I said, do you have a uh, spokesperson within the county that has the information on these, on these vehicles? And she says, oh, yeah. <laughs> so she had me call this... Uh, Karen Vaughn. Karen Vaughn, uh, I can't tell you what the agency was that she was with, but it's kind of affiliated with like the global uh, initiative out there. Uh, I, I, I saw her stuff on the website. If, if you look, look her up on her Facebook, you'll see what I mean. Kind of scary stuff. But as she said, these vehicles are there because the blacktop, the asphalt, is getting replaced at the armory, armory where they came from. Okay. Now, I, I looked at this location. I'm thinking, oh, and she said that the uh, contract to keep these vehicles there was for a year. Folks, um, does anybody believe for a minute that it's going to take a year to uh, re-asphalt? I don't think so. So it's already fallen apart. But more importantly, while I'm trying to figure things out, I know that there's a website out there called Numbers USA. Numbers USA was posting up pins on a map to show where these illegal aliens were allegedly going to be shipped and places that had, and places that had declined. There weren't that many pins on the map. And if you do a way back on this, 
if you do a way back on this, what you'll find is up until the 20th, which would have been Sunday, up until the 20th, it remained the same from July 5th. There was no change in that whatsoever. And yet there was a big change in the numbers, huge change in the numbers that they said were coming across the border. Well, curious. So we got to work. We found out, yeah, they were there. We found out that not only were they there, but that night, Monday night, a unmarked bus was seen coming from the facility. The bus was not uh, adorned with any identifying features whatsoever, and it was heavily tented on the windows. I'm sure it was just vacationers stopping by to uh, see this tourist attraction. But if it wasn't that, what do you think the chances are it was a load of these aliens? It might be pretty good. So that's the way I left it Monday night. Tuesday did a li little bit more research. Actually, late Monday night did more research. And I need to bring this point up because it's important. What we found, and when I say we, uh, my good friend Lori and, and I, I can't give her last name, Lori and I were doing this work uh, together, and she had a, uh, a line of thought that she pursued which proved to be pretty fruitful. She said, why don't we go to the commission and county commission and look at the contracts and see, what, uh, if, see if there's anything in there about uh, contracts awarded relating to that hospital. Because remember, they've been back and forth on whether, whether to shut the thing down entirely. Well, we did. And what we found for this facility was a contract was either being entertained or they had entered into it. I'm not sure which. But the contract was for a company by the name of R.W. Conveyor, Incorporated. R.W. Conveyor has similar contracts across the country. And what they do, according to their website, and according to what they were trying to contract for, was to build a conveyor system for laundry. A conveyor system for laundry at a hospital that pretty much would have nothing but hazardous waste going to the laundry, so it has special needs. I'm sorry, but that isn't adding up either. And I say that because it's, it's kind of important. If you uh, peruse the minutes of your county meetings and you see, do a search on RW Conveyor, I have a, I have a feeling you're going to find that it's going to pop up in a whole heck of a lot of places across the country. Now, today, I was given information this morning that in Tennessee, it was found out that 760 of these illegal aliens were brought to a facility there. I do not know the name of the facility at this point. We will have this later. But that was done without anybody, including the governor, knowing that this took place. Hmm. Let's see. Transparency. I guess that qualifies in, in, in Barry Satoro's book. Transparency. Well, as all this stuff was going on Tuesday, I was contemplating how I was going to report this to you. I really didn't know because some of it sounded like there was some speculation involved and I didn't want to put anything other than facts. And even though I had certain facts, I felt like there was something that was missing. And there was. There was a lot missing. But the thing that put it together for me was Numbers USA. Because Wednesday morning I got up, I had a couple of thoughts that I was going to use the way back and use their map to, uh, to, to show where all these places were. And lo and behold, Wednesday morning, it exploded with pins. There were pins all over the place, yellow and blue and red and <laughs> all kinds of colors. Wow. And there was a yellow one over there right on Oak Forest. And I put my mouse over it, and it actually said Oak Forest. Wow. They had to fess up. This is good. So I went about putting together the, uh, uh, the show. 
and decided, I think it'd be good if I printed up several of these maps from July 5th forward showing that there had been no movement on increasing the numbers of pens. And there wasn't up until July 20th. And I don't know if those pens were um, updated. Could have even been done you know, late on Monday the 21st. It, it conceivably could have been. But regardless, in the afternoon at around 1 o'clock, I went back to Numbers USA. Still mostly the same number of pins, the same kind of explosion, except, except, no more, no more Oak Forest. Just kind of disappeared. Now, let's put this together with what just happened in Tennessee. They have a secretive plan afoot that got all of the people in Tennessee involved in what appears to be a crime. That, that's what they did. And apparently they're going to go forward with that crime. And what is the crime, folks? They're just trying to find a home for these, for these innocent children, right? Isn't that, that what it is? Innocent children. I hate to say it, but uh, that's not what the reports are saying now. Instead of innocent children, what we're finding is that 90% are teenagers between the age of 14 and 18. That's right. Potential gang mem members. And more importantly than all of that, these kids have been diagnosed, in some cases, as having diseases that are not common to the Americas, not just Central and South America, not common to the Americas. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, that Eeks, reeks of biological warfare. Whether or not these kids have the diseases in question, and whether or not the latest report that I saw concerning MERS, MERS, having gone airborne, whether or not that has anything to do with this, I put forth a suggestion, and I'll say it again today you'd best be getting in contact with your um, fake representatives, your corporate um, employees. I think they're called uh, county commissioners and city councilmen. And remind them that the only line of defense you as a resident, as an inhabitant, within the meets and bounds of their city and or county, that they have a represent, representative duty to find out if these disease-ridden vessels are coming to a town near you or not. I know that uh, one of the things that was put on that map here in Georgia was uh, one that went out <clears throat> just a little a little west of us here, and I can't remember the name of the city, but the map will show you. They're coming to every state, folks. They're coming to every state. Now, by the time this is actually uh, posted on YouTube and then reposted back on the website and on various other sites, by that time, I anticipate more such clandestine sites will have been uncovered. You'd best do it because your family is in, is in danger. They truly are in danger. And the people that are putting them in danger, are you ready for this? They don't occupy the offices that you voted to have them occupy. 
Let me try that again. They're fake. It's all a ruse and has been. Lately, what research has uncovered has been that truth that in the movie with Jack Nicholson that spoke to the truth that you can't handle. This is that truth. And I have to say that it is so devastatingly big that that actor, those lines, would have been absolutely correct. You're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to wrap your head around it, but what I'm here to tell you is that the UN has a has an agency or a subsidiary called the International Monetary Fund. The International Monetary Fund has a subsidiary called the Federal Reserve. And then we have a subsidiary called E Pluribus Unum, or at least that was just prior to uh, the reorganization that you didn't hear about, bank reorganization. They didn't tell you about that one? Great. Yeah. Um, that corporate name was E Pluribus Unum United States. Huh. Yeah. What does it all mean? Well, those are rabbit holes, I'll tell you that right now. And those rabbit holes are deep. But we don't have to go down those rabbit holes because what we've determined and what we've proved now, and yes, we have the proof, is that since, let's just use 1933 because it's easier to, to go with that. When I go to my representatives this week, I'm going to start in 1871 because they already know about that one. But, folks, it's been a corporate world, not a constitutional republic. Government has not existed. Corporations run you. You are a corporation. It doesn't matter whether you uh, understand it or not. Enough do now that we can push forward and get some kind of reconciliation because the, uh, the players here, the ones who have been pillaging this nation for decade upon decade upon decade, have been doing so by literally stealing your gold. Who has been stealing the gold? Hmm. Well, for the longest time, it's only been the, the bankers in league with the lawyers. And when I say bankers, let's make sure we understand one another here. I'm not talking about your uh, local area bank. They're, they're pawns just like everybody else, and they don't have uh, any options. They've got to be, in order to, business, to do business, a member of good standing with the Federal Reserve. 